Hello and welcome. I am Gimba Umar. Tonight, President Buhari challenges West African leaders to take all necessary measures to evacuate their nationals out of Libya. NMPC warns marketers against hoarding of petroleum products as oil markets are threatened to down tools over lingering dispute in the oil sector. Trouble brews in Edo community as residents allege marginalization and claim of ownership of land by Bini Traditional Council. And South Africa's ruling African National Congress set to choose its next leader as President Zuma calls for party unity. And in business news tonight, investors await Africa's first green bond launch on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. On sports news, Nigeria's Flamingos edge past Ethiopia via the away goals rule to advance to the next round of the qualifiers for the FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup. We we'll begin tonight with the president's call for strategic regional collaboration to tackle the problem of illegal migration to Europe through North Africa, to which the president says the problem can no longer be tackled in isolation. President Muhammad Buhari was speaking at the 52nd ordinary session of ECOWAS in Abuja, the nation's capital. The 15 West African heads of state who attended the session agreed on measures to use to tackle capital flight and illegal migration and the need for dialogue to resolve internal disputes among member states whenever they arise. Our correspondent, Ajuri Nglali, reports. The 52nd ECOWAS summit opens as heads of state get seated ahead of a long day. This is not a celebration. It is sober consensus building. At a time when terrorism, internal political wrangling and illegal migration concern regional leaders, agreement is the path to progress. At this 52nd meeting of the ECOWAS heads of state, President Muhammadu Buhari's charge to West African leaders was firm and clear. Evacuate all nationals out of Libya, rehabilitate them and integrate them back into society. I have instructed the national emergency management agency to speed up the evacuation of all Nigerians stranded in Libya. We look into the possibility of putting in place a well-run regional mechanism for the evacuation, resettlement, and the empowerment of stranded echo citizens abroad. Meanwhile, we should step up dialogue with our European partners in our efforts to jointly address these challenges which affect us all. A resolution in the two-year political standoff between President Jose Mario Vaz and his nation's ruling political party over the prime ministerial slot in Guinea-Bissau is foremost on the minds of leaders represented by the ECOWAS chairperson. We express our solidarity with the people of Guinea-Bissau by extending for a few months uh, the mission of uh, ECOWAS, that is ECO member for Guinea-Bissau until December 2017, while encouraging the different political stakeholders to express and show selflessness and uh, also to take care of their people, but is to the detriment of their personal ambitions. ECOWAS heads of state further deliberated on the ECOWAS Commission's feasibility study of the pending membership of Morocco, which is set to to be decided in the first quarter of 2018, where uncertainty reigned over certainty. This summit would be defined by hard negotiation and consensus building. Ajuri Ngilale, Channels Television News. Meanwhile, many watchers of political developments in Africa did set an agenda for today's 52nd ordinary session of the ECOWAS. One particular area of interest which was probably discussed behind closed doors but not mentioned is the controversial request by Morocco for a seat in the West African bloc. Although a 2018 date has been set for a final decision to be made, yet the request continues to generate controversy. Why is Morocco up for discussion at the ECOWAS meeting? That's the big question on the lips of everyone. 
since it became obvious that the North African country is bent on joining the West African bloc. Morocco had long lost its membership of the African Union until January the 3rd this year, when the North African nation was readmitted into the continental bloc. But Morocco wants more than just a return to the AU. It is eyeing a seat in ECOWAS, a regional group which was carved out alongside four others by the 1976 resolution of the Organization of African Unity, OAU, now known as the African Union. Nigeria is one of the 15 ECOWAS countries that will decide Morocco's fate as the 52nd ECOWAS summit gets underway in Nigeria's capital, Abuja. Although the resolution on the Morocco debate will not be made public until next year, many Nigerians have been reacting to the request. Morocco, for God's sake, is going to be a problem that we will never be in a position to solve if, for now, we do not block Morocco eternally. Morocco's admission in ECOWAS, if it were to happen, would be one of the most humiliating moments and lowest points of our country's foreign policy since independence. It should not be allowed. Their viewpoints may be considered by the Nigerian delegation to the summit, but the final decision will only be made by the majority from other 14 nations who would probably see the economic gains of adding Morocco to the West African bloc. So if you allow Morocco to come in with our free movement of goods and persons, Morocco, of course, is going to be uh, a country pipe for a European Union to flood West Africa with goods and all our industry will just collapse. But there are more concerns. So we ask, what will ECOWAS nations gain in the end? Will they leverage on the military might of Morocco and its positioning in the Sahel, where many insurgents have their headquarters to fight terrorism in West Africa? Will they take advantage of Morocco's boundary ties to the Mediterranean Sea, the Sahara Desert and the Atlantic Ocean for smooth movement and links to EU nations? Or will ECOWAS nations benefit from its free movement and relaxed visa regime to connect EU nations for economic gains when Morocco finally joins the bloc? The answer to those questions will only be decided by the ECOWAS heads of state in 2018. Let's get some more perspective on this summit uh, of ECOWAS heads of state in Abuja and uh, issues surrounding the regional body. I'm now being joined on the News at 10, live from our Abuja studios by Foreign Affairs Analyst Dr. Sam Amadi. I want to thank you so much indeed for coming on the News at 10 at this time. In view of uh, the President's call for collaboration among West African states in tackling illegal migration, how far do you think they can address this given the conditions in those countries that cause the migration in the first place? Uh, well, first and foremost, uh, the legal framework for mitigating, uh, Ill Ill well, I would say, irregular migration in West Africa is a little bit difficult because, of course, we have uh, open borders as to where and the right of uh, movement in ECOWAS. But essentially, the, the, the push and pull factors responsible for migration are not things that probably you contend essentially with bilateral or multilateral treaties. You would need to deal with the socioeconomic conditions. And so we just hope that uh, the climatic change, the, the adverse climatic change uh, affecting the Sahel perhaps uh, would abate because as long as that happens, as long as drought continues to affect some of these countries, and as long as the economic challenges in these countries remain very, very difficult, uh, you would expect naturally that there will be continuous migration, irregular migration across uh, the West African uh, countries, essentially because uh, by, both by union, by laws of the union, as well as by the geopolitical uh, configuration, uh, there's little to stop movement within these borders. So essentially, uh, a plea uh, and the commitment to contain illegal migration, the question will not be uh, perhaps those who are not West African um, uh, nationals. And again, uh, the, the ethnic groups or regional groups or ethnic groups uh, that are based in West Africa share commonality with those outside West Africa. So invariably, it will be very difficult to contain um, migration into West Africa, whether illegal, as the case of those who are not nationals of ECOWAS, as well as irregular for those whose purposes are not defined by law.
No, that, that's, that's one issue that was uh, being looked at and discussed, as a matter of fact, very uh, intensely. Another was uh, to do with the attraction that ECOWAS seemed to have uh, far-flung countries like uh, Morocco, Tunisia. Uh, this is what we know. Uh, Tunisia is seeking an observer status with ECOWAS, and Morocco wants an outright membership. What do you make of that? What makes ECOWAS so attractive? Uh, that's a good point. I mean, in terms of GDP, in terms of social goods or economic goods, ECOWAS is not really uh, one of the most attractive continents, but uh, subcontinents. But essentially, the point is, uh, Morocco surprises everybody. Morocco is a strategic and part of the argument. Don't forget that Morocco was part of undermining the Maghreb Union. Uh, Morocco exited uh, the African Union. And so people are wondering, why is Morocco in Africa far flung? Uh, legally, there's no legal basis for Morocco to seek uh, to belong to ECOWAS. Uh, there's no geopolitical consideration for that, basically. And so part of what we are some people are thinking in for foreign policy circle is that this might be an entry point for Europe. And Morocco has always enjoyed very good relationship with Europe. Uh, I remember a few years ago when the heat was on African countries signing up to the EPA, the Economic Partnership for Africa, and uh, Nigeria stood strong against it during the time of Chief Ojo Madeo as foreign minister where I was special advisor. Uh, essentially, the, the, the whole thing came down to perhaps uh, Morocco will serve a strategic f f purpose for uh, European countries that are very has close collaboration, economic and social and political with, with them. Again, the question is Tunisia. Uh, Algeria. And it happens that in, in this kind of things, wherever Morocco goes, there's this competition by these Maghreb countries to probably uh, do each other. And so the, the question is, what should we do? I don't think uh, Nigeria should uh, accept to support uh, Morocco's uh, ascension to uh, ECOWAS Union. It has no business in law or in geopolitics, and essentially it will in the long term undermine both Nigeria's strategic influence in that region as well as perhaps expose us to some other, uh, you know, uh, uh, inclement and uh, unfavorable outcome when Morocco begins to play the European card or even play the North, Af North African card in West Africa. That will not be very good. Stay with me on this one because uh, let me hit you with the bull's eyes. Because a lot of people argue that uh, uh, perhaps it's not all that bad for Morocco to join ECOWAS because of the strategic positions and uh, of military warfare that it commands. But do you think, uh, by and large, that the international community is looking towards, uh, or anticipating rather, to have Morocco join ECOWAS? I think somehow that it's fit that this will succeed. I mean, um, some of the African countries are complicit in this in this Moroccan game. Uh, Nigeria's position has not been very clear as well. You know, uh, I think there is a policy, a, a foreign policy dogfight in the Nigerian policymaking machine. Uh, some of the more career diplomats are opposed to this because, of course, they can read between the lines and see that it basically has no strategic in the long term foreign policy benefit for Nigeria. But some of the more political uh, uh, um, uh, policy guys in the villa seem to kind of not really much opposed to it. So, so the basis is that some people think that uh, maybe by next year when ECOWAS uh, heads of state or, or RAVO or VEL the resolution, it might be a surprise that uh, Morocco made it. Uh, there, there are so many uh, strategic influence driving this. And of course, we do know, with, especially with uh, what happened with Gaddafi, when he wanted the, uh, the African uh, state of Africa and some of the other smaller African countries were either bribed or somehow influenced through the power of, uh, of a strong Libyan government. We would, we would not be surprised if some of the ECOWAS countries, in spite of themselves and in spite of good sense, really sign up to allow Morocco come in. Morocco is very desperate to be part of yeah. Africa Union, uh, ECOWAS Union, uh, and uh, perhaps uh, with consider, considering the political clout and the economic clout of some of these countries, apart from Nigeria, Senegal, perhaps, and Ghana, uh, you might see that those are, some of them may not withstand the massive uh, diplomatic overreach of, of Morocco, uh, assisted somehow by some of the European countries. So I, I, we, would, we could see Morocco you know, succeeding in this mission, but essentially, the 
Nigerian policy is, uh, office policy machine should oppose it because in the long term it will first undermine Nigerian strong influence in ECOWAS and Nigeria needs ECOWAS big both as a market and for other security uh, consideration and secondly basically it might create an undue European influence in, in West African affairs because Morocco is usually could be usually a conduit of strategic European interests. Dr. Sam Amadi, uh, Foreign Affairs Analyst with you sincerely. Thank you so much indeed for sharing your thoughts with us here on the News at 10. In part two, after the break, Governor Shatima defends approval of the withdrawal of $1 billion from the excess crude account to prosecute anti-terror war. Please stay with us.